Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nielsen Networking video. In this video, I am going to show you how BARD, which is Google's answer to OpenAI slash Microsoft, however you want to spin it, their chat GTP can be used to help you with ethical hacking. And for those of you who haven't heard of chat GTP or BARD, you know, maybe you've been under a rock, as they say, or, you know, you haven't been on the internet or YouTube or anything in a year. Uh, what they both, what chat GTP and BARD are, is known as a large language model AI. And they are both equally capable of wondrous yet very scary and dangerous things. And I say that because on one end of the spectrum, you know, on the wondrous end of the spectrum, we have you know, the capability to write an essay, the capability to write a book, technically, if you wanted. You could um, troubleshoot your code. You could have ChatGTP write your code. You could have them write your AIs, you know. Um, you could even have them write you a grocery list if you wanted. Uh, but then there's on the other end of the spectrum, let's call it the dangerous slash nefarious end of the spectrum. They can write you malware. They can assist you in writing phishing emails that look legitimate, that don't have the common spelling, grammar, or sentence structure problems that you're used to seeing in phishing attempts. So it's a game changer on both sides of the spectrum, good and bad. So as anything in life, it all depends kind of who's yielding that resource. And that's going to depend how the outcome comes. So if that even was English right there. But you know what I mean? Uh, that said, I have used both of these platforms extensively. I was an early adopter of ChatGTP. I, I was a big fan. I still am a big fan. I think it's wonderful. But I have to say, as of late, it's been a pain to use. My responses get cut off, even on the paid subscription. Responses don't always go up. Um, the response time is super slow. Uh, it just hasn't been a great experience. So I, I actually decided to give Bar to try. I'm like, I heard some good things about a recent press release. That Bard, you know, has caught up in their stock. Apparently, if people are liking it, it's gone up a lot in the last couple of days. So some, they're doing something and something big. Needless to say, I was drawn to Bard and then I tried it out and I, I've fallen in love with it. When I first tried it a couple months ago, it wasn't as, as good. And I think I was, you know, like everyone else, I jumped on the bandwagon with ChatGTP. But I can say now I will. If I was given the choice, which I am, of ChatGTP or Bard, I'm going with Bard as of now. That might change in the future, but as of now, I like BARD. I like that it gives me my responses quicker. I like that I get better responses. I don't have to go back and refine so much. I, I like that it's a pretty easy sign-up process. I just sign in with my Google account and boom, I'm in. Don't have to go through the, you know, the ringer of this, then my access code, then my cell phone. I can't change my cell phone. There's all these things I just didn't really care for with OpenAI and ChatGTP that I, I've never experienced with BARD. So I'm off my soapbox now. This is a BARD video. And specifically a BARD video to uh, go over how it can assist with some um, ethical hacking practices. And we're going to target a few in this video, and they're going to be how it can help with uh, making your life a little bit easier when using Nmap, when using ARP, and when performing a DNS enumeration. And again, we're just going to scratch the surface of three things I thought would be helpful to my audience out there. I could go on and make a five hour video about what you could do with this thing. And I'll, you know, I'll spout some ideas. I might not show you them, but things that this is capable of. And you'll see those ideas as we go through the video today. So enough chatting, let's get to it. All right, and as always for all my videos, we will be using my virtual uh, virtual box lab where I will be running a Kali Linux box to perform everything during the video. And I also have a Metasploitable server up that I spun up so we can uh, test against it. So. Again, these are mine and my network, and I have permission to do whatever I want because it's mine. And we're going to move on here, and we're going to go over and show you how to get to bard.google.com. You would just take this, you know, you could go over, put it in here, hit enter. It's going to take you there, and there you go. First time you go, you will need to sign up or sign in using your Google account. If you don't have one, you'll need to sign up for one. And that's that. So. Back at the uh, bar screen here, we have a few options over on the left. This will hide the main menu if you click this button right here. You can reset the chat. And what this does, it's the same thing as on chat GTP. When you click uh, delete and then you hit the green arrow, it deletes the chat. This does the same thing. But the difference is this doesn't permanently delete it. It just deletes this the current chat you're in. So this is a little different than chat GTP. You have to go to the BARD activity to see all your bat, your no, your bass, your past um, activity and your different chats. So that's how you would do it. That's what Bard activity is. Uh, the FAQ you could go in there and read that if you wanted to update. You could see the same thing. 
The only other thing worth note here is going to be down here, use light theme. This won't work for me, I don't think, because I'm on a dark chrome theme. But if you weren't, you could turn on the uh, light theme or dark theme, whatever you prefer. I like the dark theme, but to each their own. And with that, let's go ahead and get started with Bard. And it tells you up here, it's your creative and helpful collaborator, which it really is. I don't know how helpful it is, but it's definitely, a, or I should say, I don't know how creative it is, but it's definitely helpful. Um, and again, this is a like a beta, if you will. So you'll notice as you go through it, it's going to ask you to rate thumbs up, thumbs down and all that hoopla. So I'll show you that. So let's get started with our first query. All right. And to get our feet wet, I'm just going to ask it a simple question. I'm going to say, uh, list the, ooh, hello, uppercase, list the top 20 ports and services that are scanned during a vulnerability scan. All right. And I have a typo there. You know what? Let's just leave it because I bet you it's smart enough to correct it. We're going to go ahead and run it. Vulnerability. <laughs> um, and there you go. Pretty cool, right? Quick results, you get the thumbs up because we like it. Good job, Google. We can also click Google it and it'll give us a little result here and then you can go out and get it. This is in response, I believe, to um, Bing and how they're incorporating ChatGTP in their search results. I guess it's kind of going backwards. We're getting the results from BARD and then we can go out to the internet. But, you know, pretty cool stuff there, right? You could take it a step further and obviously you could say, you know, like, put that list in a script. I can run on Linux to display the ports. Or just display the info. We don't really need to do this. This is just to kind of give you an idea of how the mindset of uh, Bard works here. So, you know, here it goes. It gave us a little script that would um, print out the ports. And here it tells you the how it would work. And here's what it should display when it's ran. So. Pretty cool stuff right there. That's not really what we're going to go down, but just kind of give you an overview of what you could do for it. So let's go ahead and reset the chat here. And let's start on, on our first legitimate scan or um, query. What we want to do, and I say scan because we're actually going to be uh, working with Nmap here, which of course it does network scanning. So the easiest way I have found and the most successful way to get the good results is to open up a document, you know, Word doc, um, VI, Nano, you name it, whatever, whatever floats your boat, something you can write on. You can write it by hand if you want, um, but then you'll have to, you know, transcribe it into the, the window here. Uh, but we want to gather our thoughts and we want to actually think about what exactly what do we want to ask Bard for. So I've done that and I've done that and I'm going to paste it in here now and we're going to check it out. So what I've said is I want to create a shell script that will allow me to perform nmap scans on Kali Linux. I said that because I'm on Kali Linux. You could say whatever you wanted, or you could have it in Python or whatever language you wanted it in. Uh, it's your, your input, you do whatever you want. The program will need a menu that the user can select from the following scans. Now I picked these scans, you know, because these are what I felt were the most common scans I use. You could put whatever you wanted in here. Maybe you don't want all these. You don't need to, I did. And for this demo, that's what we're going to go with. And at the bottom, I said, the program should prompt the user to enter the address or network to scan. Um, I guess looking back at this right now, we probably don't need to do that because Nmap is going to make you do that. But there was a reason I put it in there. Maybe it wasn't doing it. So anyway, let's go ahead and hit re return here or submit. And let's see what we get. And it's thinking, it's thinking. And boom, here we go. This is our code. It's all put out here. It goes down here and tells you what to do. You get this cool little thing here and you can just copy the code. And we're gonna do now, we're gonna hop over to our Linux box and we're gonna test this, right? Um, and we need to open a terminal here. I thought I had one open, I do. And we're gonna go over here. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go nano and we're just gonna go nmap.sh. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna paste it in here it's all in there. I'm going to save it. I'm going to get out of it. And then we're going to give it some rights to be ran. And now we're going to run it and see what we get. All right. So it appears that part's working, right? So let's do a network discovery scan. Okay. And let's do it on my network and just run it here. 
and let's let it go. And sure enough, here are our results. And this is the Metasploitable box. And here's Kali Linux box. It's kind of interesting how I picked up that before that, but whatever. Um, so pretty cool, right? We got what we want there. That's pretty basic, right? Um, so what if we wanted to add an option to that? All right, let's go back over to our chat GTV. So let's say while we're in the same chat, and it is important that you stay in the same chat, that we now want to add an option to scan a specific port. So sure, what we can do is, and I'm lazy here, we can now add a scan option to scan for a specific port, have a program ask you what port to scan. So we want it to prompt us for what port to scan. So we're gonna say, can you do that for us? See what it says. And that's pretty quick, right? Because that's not as intense as the code we put at the beginning. So pretty cool, right? It even relisted it here, spelled it out. Awesome. But you know what? I don't like that. I wanted the vulnerability scan to be the last one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to move that to op option eight to number five and then move all the other ones down, right? See what we get. And see, this is honestly, and I'm not, I don't, I shouldn't say I don't own Google stock, but I don't own much Google stock. But this is much quicker than the responses I get from ChatGTP. So that's one reason I'm a big guy for Bard right now. But let's take this code and let's jump over here. And we're going to go back and we're going to get rid of nmap.sh. And we're going to go back. Whoops. And we're going to open it up. And we're going to put the new code, right? And as you can see, eight options. And it. Ooh. Did I copy the wrong thing? Or is. It's not behaving. Let's go take a look over here and see what happened. Um, that's interesting. I wonder if I copied the wrong code. Let's try it again. Let's go back over here and let's actually just get out of there. Let's go back in and let's see. Da, da, da. Okay, that's better. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out. We're going to hit yes. We're going to save it. We're going to give it rights to run and we're going to run it again. And there you go. Look, we now have the option to run and let's go number five here and let's do it. Let's go against uh, 13. That's our metasploitable box. And let's have a chance. Uh, let's scan for DNS. See if we got DNS open on that day. Uh, la, 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 and it is not. Oh, it is open. All right, sweet. So we now know that's open. So pretty cool, right? That's success. And let's say now we want Go back to chat GTP. What can we do? We okay, I know what we'll do. We'll kill it. We want it. We want an option to exit the program. So let's go ahead and put in my pre written uh, script here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to have it at option nine that sends a control C to kill the program when selected. I could have just told it to exit, but whatever. Um, I'm my own critic, I guess. So and the result should return us to the command line. So let's go ahead and hit this. Let's see what it does. And let's give it a second here. And you can see we got the option for nine. Let's copy the right code this time. Let's go, whoops, I do that every time. Let's go back over here and let's do an RM on that. And then let's, let's go to nano. Move it fast. And nano, let's paste in here. And then let's do that and let's go there. All right, so now we're going to run it. All right, cool. We got our exit button, right? Easy. Oh, but it's asking us, well, that's not what we want. Okay, so that, oh, see, that's not what we wanted. We wanted it just to get out of there. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back and tell it, it did sloppy code right there. We're not really going to tell it that. We're instead, we're going to tell it that option nine should not ask for the network when you want to scan. Can you remove that? We're going to see if it will do it. And we got some new code. And let's see what it says up here. Sure, the updated script, it didn't admit that it had a mistake there, which is interesting. A lot of times it will say, oh, sorry. Da, 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 da. So let's go ahead and go back over here. Let's get rid of it. Until I've done this before, huh? And then we're gonna go here, and then we're gonna go there, and then we're gonna go here. And there we go again. I'm showing off and not working out so much. And there we go. All right, so let's try to exit now. And boom, we're out. Pretty cool, right? Um, the last thing, it would be nice. Well, and let's just here, let's double check that this is working. So let's just go in here one more time. Let's do a six. 
And we're going to do, try to find out what OS we're running here on this device. Let's see what we get here. Make sure the whole script's working. All right, so we're good because it is running on Linux, a very old version of Linux, which is why I have it because it's perfect to uh, test against. The last thing we're going to do is it would be cool to get those results in a file. Sure, we could just pipe it right there on the command line and it would probably work, but I'm going to have the program give us the option to do it. And then we'll move on. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell it for each option. And you do have to be pretty specific about it because if you just do this, it's going to add for option nine, which we were just working on, what we're telling it right now, which would be pointless because we don't, we're exiting. Why would we want it to write our exiting to a, a Anyways, so you need to be specific. So for each option, after the network or IP is input, um, have it prompt if you want to output to screen or if we can be written to a file named nmap.output. So we're going to add that to it and we're going to wait. And you know, now we're getting, you know, this is getting pretty technical on this script right here, right? Not bad for, uh, you know, not being Python or anything. And we're going to need to go here and copy that. We're going to go back for our final test of nmap here. And let's go ahead and paste this code in here. And we're going to go there. And we're going to go, whoops, give it some rights. And we're going to execute it. And here we go. So let's do, mm, let's do seven. And we'll go 10, 0, 2, 13. And let's see what we get here. And of course, as soon as I pause the video, it uh, res the results come in. So it looks like it's prompting us. Do a screen or a file. Let's do F for file and see if we get the output we want. And there we go. So let's clear the screen so we can see what our output looks like. And let's cat and map dot output. And there you go. There is the results in the file. So it actually looked like it displayed them both on the screen and in a file. But you know what? At this point in the video, I'm not going to argue with it. It gave us the results we needed. And we're going to move on to something else here. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. And to do that, we need to go back over to BART. All right, we're gonna use ARP in our next example. And remember, you could do this with anything. I just chose these three things we're gonna go over. Nmap for, you know, everyone uses Nmap, or if you don't, you better be learning Nmap. Uh, I have some great videos on my channel, check them out. And then ARP, I know some, some of you might consider it old school, depending on uh, what you're actually doing in the field of ethical hacking or cybersecurity, but it's still very useful. And it's important to understand the fundamentals of, you know, how man in the middle is done how Mac cloning and all that stuff. So you need to know ARP to know how that works. So what we're gonna do is, I am gonna just really simply in, you know, over in Notepad++ type this up and now I'm gonna paste it in there and we're just gonna ask it, you know, write a script. These are the options we want in the menu and we're gonna hit enter and we're gonna see what Bard comes up with here. And let's, that's interesting that it already has an address on it. Um, hopefully that's just an example. I should pay attention to the code before I have it. Okay, so now we're seeing that little screen where it's actually not showing the um, code snippet. So I'm gonna go over here to the other draft option and see if any of them have it and none of them do. So I am not liking that. So I'm gonna try resetting the chat and putting it in one more time. Cause I've had some really bad results, as I said. When I don't see that code copy option, I've tended to, uh, not get the results I want, and I'm still not getting it. So why? Okay, so here's a snippet option. Let's give it a shot. Let's just see. Sometimes this will work. Sometimes I'll have to actually go and tweak the code a little bit, or not the code, the um, query that I'm asking it. So we're gonna go over here, and we're just gonna do now ARP, we'll paste it in there. We'll save it up, give it some, give it some rights. Let's try running it. Okay, so far so good. Let's see if it actually shows the art table. Okay. Um, let's try, I don't really want to add or delete anything. Let's just do exit and see if that works. Okay, so, so far so good. Oop, my bad. Let's try this. Let's see what four does. Let's see what we get here. All right, so. All right, so let's try, let's do three, let's delete 10, zero, two, 13. Now let's see if it's not there. And now let's try it again. And let's see what we get. 
So it's still not showing up there. So it doesn't look like that scan is doing any good. Let's try this here. Let's try to add just for giggles. So let's go add and let's put 1002.13, but let's put it to this Mac. Oops, actually I'm jumping the gun here. We gotta hit enter. Now I gotta put the Mac. Okay. All right, now let's see what we got here. All right, now here's what interesting. See, we just did, we just cloned the Mac. See how we're the same here? So that's not good. You wouldn't want that going down there. So technically, if you know, and again, it looks like this is the same because these are the same devices as VirtualBox, but we just cloned it here. So now if someone goes out there and is looking for this Mac, they would send packets to this IP address, which would be the man in the middle. Um, so that's for that. And now let's move on to our last option here, or our last example, I should say. And our last example is going to be, we're gonna ask um, for a quick script that will do DNS enumeration for us. And I have the code right here, or the code. I have the query that I want to put in. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter that and we'll see what we get here. And I'm sorry the video went a little longer. Uh, I wanted to give you an actual video that gave you the, oh, here's my kitty. She's sorry it went too long too. But I wanted to give you some actual back and forth and let you know that, you know what, you are gonna have to deal with this feedback. It's not gonna be all sunshine and rainbows trying to, to, get, to get this to be what you want it to. It does involve a little pain, but it is worth it in the long run to get the results you want. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to do nano. We're gonna go ahead and paste the code in. We're gonna go ahead and control X, clear it up, give it some rights, and let's run it. And let's run it against scanme.nmap.org. All right. And you can see it, you know, it's not pulling any M or any record really from there, which I guess I wouldn't expect it to, other than an A record it did pull, uh, an IP6 uh, A record, but no other record. So let's just go right to uh, nmap itself, nmap.org. All right, and there's some more information. You can see obviously the A records and that stuff, and then the C name. Uh, MX records, t -t -t SPF records, and all that good stuff. So that did work. Very cool. Um, and you know what? With that, I think we are near the end of the video. So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to smash that like button. We'd appreciate it. If you'd like to see future content, feel free to subscribe. We get a lot of views, but not so many subscribers. So every subscriber helps us get that count out so you don't miss our uh, future videos. All right, and take care, everyone.